top of the morning, day or evening to you, boys and girls. Remember, my name is Aunt Lucinda and we finished reading chapters one and two of the field guide last week. We met Jared and Simon, his twin, and we also met Mallory and their mother. They're called the Grace Children, that's their last name. Remember that they moved to my old Victorian house in the middle of nowhere. It seems like their father has left the family and the mother had to move the children to my house because they had nowhere else to go. They used to live in New York City and things are very different at Spiderwick. My house is a Victorian, it's from the 1800s, very old and kind of damaged. A little bit spooky too, Jared notices and hears noises in the walls. So poor Jared is a little bit scared and he, Mallory and Simon went exploring last time in the house. They found the nest of whatever was making the noises in the house. So they found a doll's head. They found cockroaches on a string. They also found toy soldiers that were broken and melted. And Mallory's fencing metal was there. So whatever's in the walls has been stealing from the Grace children from the second that they walked in the door. Of course, they also found a dumb waiter that could take Jared up into the walls to see where it led to. Now, when he got to the top of the, the area where the dumb waiter went, he found a secret room. So today we're gonna find out more about some of the secrets at Spiderwick. And today we're gonna to read chapters three and four, but first we gotta go over some words that you may need to hear and know the definition of to understand what is going on in the story. So our first word is sputchered. That just means somebody speaks really quickly in a confused or excited way, and you can't always understand what they said. The second word is compendium, and that is just a collection of stories, paintings, drawings, photos, and facts, all gathered together in one book or in some other form. The third word is torso, and torso is the top part of the human body. Uh, it does not include the head or the arms or the legs, so. Makeshift. Makeshift is something that's made quickly with random pieces, and it's a substitute for the real thing like a lantern. Mallory made a makeshift lantern out of a candle in a jar last time. Scrawled is the next word, and that's to write really quickly or scribble, and that means that people can't always make out what the writing means or says. The sixth word is snuffed. That just means a candle gets blown out, either by you squeezing the wick or by a wind or something like that, that blows out the candle. The seventh word, rustling. Rustling just means a quick series of small sounds like leaves rustling in the wind in the fall. Scrunched is another word you're gonna hear and that just means to squeeze together really quickly and really tightly. Perfusion, that means there's a large amount of something. There's plenty of it. Victrola, that is an old record player. A lot of you may not have ever seen a record player, but this is the oldest kind. It has a wooden base and has a metal needle. And then it also has this big horn type thing at the top. And you can see it in the picture there that I have. And the final word is embossed. And that just means that a pattern or a picture is raised up on the cover of a book or a card or a record cover. So you can feel the pattern as well as see it. A lot of time embossed patterns are in red or in silver or gold. All right, so let's find out a little bit more about Spiderwick and my old house and all the mysteries that are going on there and see what the thing is in the walls if we get to figure out that mystery yet.
or if you have to wait a little longer. So here we are with chapter three and four. Enjoy boys and girls and I'll see you in a little bit. Chapter three, in which there are many riddles. Jared looked around the room. It was a smallish library with one huge desk in the center. On it was an open book and a pair of old fashioned round glasses that caught the candlelight. Jared walked closer. The dim glow illuminated one title at a time as he scanned the shelves. They were all strange. A history of Scottish dwarves, a compendium of brownie visitations from around the world, and anatomy of insects and other flying creatures. A collection of glass jars containing berries, dried plants, and one filled with dull river stones sat on the edge of the desk. Nearby, a watercolor sketch showed a little girl and a man playing on the lawn. Jared's eyes fell on a note tossed on top of an open book, both coated in a thin layer of dust. The paper was yellowed with age, but handwritten on it was a strange little poem. In a man's torso you will find my secret to all mankind. If false and true can be the same, you will soon know of my fame. Up and up and up again, good luck, dear friend. He picked it up and read it thoroughly, carefully. It was as though a message had been left there just for him. But by whom? What did the poem mean? He heard a shout from downstairs. Mallory, Simon, what are you doing up? Jared groaned. It just figured that mom would get back from the store now. There, there was a squirrel in the wall, Jared could hear Mallory say. Their mother cut Mallory off. Where's Jared? Neither of his siblings said anything. You bring that dumb waiter down. If your brother is in there. Jared ran over in time to watch the box disappear down into the wall. His candle choked on the wax and sputtered from his sudden movement, but it didn't go out. See, Simon said weakly, the dumb waiter must have showed up empty. Well, where is he then? I don't know, Mallory said. In bed, asleep? Their mother sighed. <sighs> well, go on, both of you, and join him now. Jared listened to their retreating steps. They'd have to wait a while before they snuck down to get him. That is, if they didn't just figure the dumbwaiter had taken him all the way upstairs. They'd probably be surprised not to find him in bed. How could they know he was trapped in a room without a door? There was a rustling sound behind him. Jared spun around. It came from the desk. As he held up his makeshift lamp, Jared saw that something had been scrawled in the dust of the desk. Something that wasn't there before. It said, click clack, watch your back. Jared jumped, causing his candle to tilt. Running wax snuffed the flame. He stood in the darkness, so scared he could barely move. Something was in here, in the room, and it could write. He backed toward the empty chute, biting the inside of his lip to keep from screaming. He could hear the rustling of bags downstairs as his mother unpacked groceries. What's there? He whispered into the darkness. What are you? Only a silence answered him. I know you're there, Jared said. But there was no reply and no more rustling. Then he heard his mother on the stairs, a door, and nothing. Nothing but a silence so thick and heavy that it choked him. He felt that even breathing too loudly would give him away. Any moment, the thing would be upon him. There was a creak from inside the wall. Startled, Jared dropped the jar, then realized it was only the dumbwaiter. He felt his way through the darkness. Get in, his sister 
w sister whispered up the shaft. Jared squeezed into the metal box. He was so filled with relief that he barely noticed the ride down to the kitchen. As soon as he got out, he started speaking. There was a library, a secret library with weird books, and something was in there. It wrote in the dust. Shh, Jared, Simon said. Mom's going to hear us. Jared held up the piece of paper with the poem on it. Look at this. It has some kind of directions on it. Did you actually see anything? Mallory asked. I saw the message in the dust. It said, watch your back. Jared replied hotly. Mallory shook her head. No, oh, that could have been written there ages ago. Well, well, it wasn't, Jared insisted. I saw the desk and there was nothing written on it before. Calm down, Mallory said. Mallory, I saw it. Mallory grabbed his shirt and her fist. Be quiet. Mallory, let go of your brother. Their mother was standing at the top of the narrow kitchen stairs wearing a less than pleased expression. I thought we already went through this. If I see any of you out of your beds, I'm going to lock you in your rooms. Mallory let go of Jared's shirt with a long glare. What if we need to go to the bathroom? Simon asked. Just go to bed, their mother said. When they got upstairs, Jared and Simon went off to their room. Jared pulled the covers over his head and scrunched his eyes shut. I believe you about the note and all, Simon whispered, but Jared didn't reply. He was just glad to be in bed. He thought he could probably stay there for a whole week. Chapter four, in which there are answers, although not necessarily to the right questions. Jared woke up to the sound of Mallory screaming. He jumped out of bed and rushed down the hall past Simon and into his sister's room. Long pieces of her hair had been knotted to the brass headboard. Her face was red, but the worst part was the strange pattern of bruises, bruises that decorated her arms. Their mother was seated on the mattress, her fingers tugging at the knots. What happened? Jared asked. Just chop it! Mallory sobbed. Cut it off! I want to get out of this bed! I want out of this house! I hate this place! Who did this? Their mother looked at Jared angrily. I don't know. Jared glanced at Simon standing in the doorway looking puzzled. It must have been the thing in the walls. Their mother's eyes got huge. It was scary. Jared Grace, I saw you arguing with your sister last night. Mom, I, I didn't do it, honest. He was shocked that she thought he would do something like this. He and Mallory were always fighting, but it didn't mean anything. Get the scissors, Mom! Mallory yelled. Both of you out. Jared, I will talk to you later. Mrs. Grace turned back to her daughter. Jared left the room, his heart pounding. When he thought about Mallory's knotted hair, he couldn't contain a shiver. You think that thing did it, don't you? Simon asked as they entered the bedroom. Jared looked at his brother in dismay. Well, don't you? Simon nodded. I keep thinking about that poem I found, Jared said. It's the only clue we have. How's a stupid poem gonna help? I don't know, Jared sighed. Oh, you're smart. You should be figuring this out. Well, how come nothing happened to us or to mom? Jared hadn't even thought about that. I don't know, he said again. Simon gave him a long look. Well, what do you think? Jared asked. Simon it out the door. I don't know what I think. I'm going to go try and catch some crickets. Jared watched him go and wondered what he could do. Could he really solve anything by himself? Getting dressed, he thought about the poem. Up and up and up again was the simplest line, but what did it mean exactly? Up in the house, up on the roof, up in a tree? Maybe the poem was just something that an old dead relative was keeping around 
something that wasn't going to help at all. But since Simon was feeding his animals and Mallory was being freed from her bed, he had nothing better to do than wonder how far up and up and up again he needed to go. So, okay, maybe it wasn't the easiest clue after all, but Jira had figured it couldn't hurt to go up, past the second floor, to the attic. The stairs were worn clean of their paint, and several times the boards he stepped on creaked so dramatically that Jared was afraid they were going to snap from his weight. The attic level was a vast room with a slanted ceiling and a gaping hole in the floor on one end. Through it, he could see down into one of the unusable bedrooms. Old garment bags hung from the clothesline of thin wire stretching across the width of the attic. Bird houses hung in profusion from the rafters and a dressmaker's dummy stood alone in a corner, a hat over its knobbed head. And in the center of the room, there was a spiral staircase. Up and up and up again. Jared took the stairs two at a time. The room he entered was small and bright. There were windows on all sides. And when he looked out, he could see the chipped worn slate of the roof below him. He could see his mother's station wagon out in the gravel driveway. He could even see the carriage house and the long lawn that ran down into the woods. This must be the part of the house that had the weird iron fencing on top of it. What a great place! Even Mallory would be impressed when he brought her up here. Maybe it would make her less upset about her hair. There wasn't much in the room. An old trunk, a small stool, a Victrola, and a rolls of faded fabric. Jared sat down pulled the crumpled poem from his pocket and read it through again. In a man's torso, you will find my secret to all mankind. Those lines bothered him. He didn't want to find an old dead body, even if there was something really cool inside of it. The bright yellow sunlight splashing across the floor reassured him. In movies, bad things seldom happened in broad daylight but he still hesitated to open the trunk. Maybe he should go outside and get Simon to come up with him. But what if the chest was empty? Or what if the poem had nothing to do with Mallory's bruises and knotted hair? Not knowing what else to do, he knelt down and brushed cobwebs and grime from the top of the trunk. Heavy strips of rusted metal striped the rotting leather. At least he could take a look. Maybe the clue would be more obvious if he knew what was inside. Taking a breath, Jared pushed up the lid. It was full of very old, moth-eaten clothes. Underneath, there was a pocket watch on a long chain, a tattered cap, and a leather satchel full of old, odd-looking pencils and cracked bits of charcoal. Nothing in the trunk looked like it was secret for mankind or anybody else. Nothing looked like a dead body either. In a man's torso, you will find my secret to all mankind. He looked down at the contents of the chest again, and it hit him. He was looking at a chest. A man's torso would be his chest. Jared groaned in frustration. How could he be right and still have nothing to show for it? There was nothing good in the chest, and the other lines of the poem made no sense at all. If false and true can be the same, you will soon know of my fame? How could that be answered with something real? It sounded like a word game. What could be false though? Something about this situation? Something about the stuff in the chest? The chest itself? He thought about chests, and chests made him think about pirates on a beach, burying treasure deep in the cool sand. It could be buried underneath. Not a false chest, but a chest with a false bottom. Looking carefully, he could see that the inside seemed higher than it should be. Had he really solved the riddle? Jared got down on his knees and began to push all over the floor of the trunk, threading his fingers to look for seams that might allow him to pull an unseen compartment 
open. When he found nothing, he began to touch the outside, pawing over the box. Finally, when he pressed three fingers against the edge of the left side, a compartment popped open. Excited beyond reason, Jared pressed his hand inside. The only contents were a squarish bundle wrapped in dirty cloth. He took it out, untied it, and started to unfold the fabric from an old crumbling book that smelled like burnt paper. Embossed on the brown leather, the title read, Arthur Spiderwick's Field Guide to the Fantastical World Around You. The cover was ragged at the edges, and as he opened it, he noticed that it was full of watercolor sketches. The writing had been done in ink, grown smudged and spotted with age and water damage. He flipped the pages quickly, glancing at notes tucked into the volume. These were written in a spidery hand, very like the writing of the riddle. The strangest thing, however, was the subject matter. The book was full of information about fairies. So boys and girls, lots of things happened in chapters three and four. And I have some questions for you that I want you to really think about. When Jared was in the secret room, who do you think was in that painting he was looking at while he was holding up the candle? Who do you think that could have been? Also, the room had lots of different things in it. What do you think the room was used for? What kind of job do you think the person did who kept stuff in that room? Think about all the stuff that they talked about. Um, what do you think the poem that Jared found means? And why do you think it was there? Let me read it to you real quick. If I can find it. <laughs> it says, in a man's torso you will find my secret to all mankind. If false and true can be the same, you will soon know of my fame. Up and up and up again. Good luck, dear friend. So that was the poem he found. Kind of like a riddle. And we see in the next chapter that he did kind of follow the riddle and find some stuff. And remember, before Jared left the secret room, he saw something else. Somebody had scrawled a message to him on the desk in the dust. So, who had written that? He thought he was alone. It said, click clack, watch your back. What do you think it means? And who do you think wrote it? He was supposed to be all alone in there. That's what really scared him. Uh, I have some other questions for you about the next chapter. When Jared went to bed that night before, he woke up in the morning and he heard screaming. Why was Mallory screaming? What had happened to her? And who or what do you think did that to her? Who does Jared's mom think did that to her? And who did Jared think did the stuff to Mallory? overnight. Does Simon agree with Jared? So Simon decides to go out and try to catch some animals. He's not really interested in what Jared is trying to do. He doesn't seem to care much about the poem or about the mystery that's in the house. So how did Jared think he could solve the problem with the thing in the walls and what happened to Mar Mallory? And then where did he go? Where did he decide that the riddle was supposed to take him? And what did he find up where the riddle seemed to take him? And what was it all about? Because it was about some interesting stuff. It was a, um, a mystery, but now he kind of knows what it is. Uh, after this week, we will go ahead and do chapters five and six. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the book. 
and we will find out more about Jared and what's in the walls and what is doing the stuff to Mallory and stealing stuff and if this is a if there's good things and bad things in the walls or is it just one and the same so boys and girls I have to go back to my hospital but I will see you next week so take care have a good day good evening good night